Hello and welcome to the second part of the trigonometry review appendix found in Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math, a game programming approach with MATLAB. Right, so in the previous um, part we considered trigonometry in terms of a right triangle. We, we defined sine, cosine, and tangent in terms of uh, side length of a right triangle. Here we're going to think of cosine and sine in terms of a unit circle, right? And so I'll do that in one second. Let me just put this into full screen mode. Okay, so this is the unit circle, right? It is, it is a circle centered at the origin. The radius is one, and it goes the whole way around like a circle does, right? And now we're gonna define cosine and sine of this angle which is the counterclockwise angle from the positive x-axis, right? This is the positive x-axis. Theta goes this way, right? Um, okay, so we're going to define cosine. So every time you come, up, every time you're on the circle, there is an x and a y point, right? And we're going to define x to be the cosine of theta. So whatever x is, that's the cosine of theta, and whatever y is. That's the sine of theta. So you travel around and you get cosine theta and sine theta as you go around this circle. And, um, and so that's what this, these are saying right here. Cosine is x, sine is y, and tangent is just y over x. All right, it's that ratio. Um, the nice thing about this is if you're in this first quadrant over here, all right, um, this matches the triangle trig, right? Because this value here, and let me get rid of my origin, this distance right here is x, right? And this distance here is y. So I really have a triangle where the adjacent side length is x and the opposite side length is y. So the cosine of that angle is just gonna be x over the hypotenuse, which is one. The sine is just going to be the opposite, which is y over the hypotenuse, which is one. And then the tangent is just going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which is y over x. So, so long as we're floating around in this first quadrant, triangle trig, unit circle trig, they are actually the same. What, what changes is that now we can have angles that are bigger than 90 degrees, right? We go all the way around, around some more, whatever you want. You can even have sine, cosine, and tangent of negative angles, right? If you go in the clockwise direction, that's considered a negative angle. Um, it is also immediately obvious what the cosine is when theta equals zero, right? So there's the cosine is going to be one and the sine is going to be zero. Or 90, you're going to get cosine is zero, sine is one. Or 180, you're going to get cosine negative one, sine zero. So getting the sine and cosine for these angles it's really quite easy when you think of it in terms of a unit circle. All right? It is also very obvious from the unit circle um, definition of these trig functions that if you go around, you know, suppose you go around 360, you're back where you started. And that doesn't matter where you start. If you started here and you go around 360, you'd wind up back there again. So you can see that these functions are, in fact, periodic. Right? And so that brings us to radians, right? Radians, instead of degrees, is used um, as arguments in these sine and cosine and tangent functions in all software. So you would never really put in the angle and degree. So in terms of radians, this angle theta is actually this arc length here, right? And that arc length well, we know the total circumference of this circle is 2 pi r, right? But the radius is 1, is just 2 pi. So when you go the whole way around, that angle in radians is 2 pi, right? And so if you go halfway around, that's pi radians. A quarter of the way around, that's pi over 2. So I'm just taking this 2 pi, cutting it in half, cutting it in fourths, you can cut it in thirds, things like that. But the radians is just a, 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 um, 
a distance along this unit circle. That's where those that's where those measurements come from, right? And what you can see is that you know if you have an angle in degrees, suppose that's suppose that's 60 degrees. It looks like it might be about 60. Then what you the radians is going to be 60 over the grand total is uh, 360. And you're going to multiply that by, it's going to equal, let's see, what over um, 2 pi. Right, and so x, this will actually be the angle in radians. And if you solve that for x, what you get is that x equals, um, you know, 60 over 360 times 2 pi. And what you get is the angle in degrees, right, times pi over 180. Right, so you can sort of derive this formula for getting radians from degrees. You take the degrees and you multiply it by pi over 180. And likewise, if you're given the angle in radians, then you take 180 over pi and multiply it by the radians. Right. So these are the conversion formulas, um, where D is the angle in degrees, R is the angle in radians. Right. And um, finally, if your circle had radius R instead of 1, right? if this was R instead of 1, and suppose I had this point, right, then the cos this is still going to be x, y. Right? And then the cosine of this angle, the cosine of my angle theta right there, is going to be adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so what that does is it gives you a formula for x and y whenever I'm on a circle of a radius other than just um, 1. If I have a radius r, then um, the value of x let me just do an arrow here instead. X equals R times the cosine of theta. All right, I'm just taking it from this formula. All right, and so these are, you know, the formulas for getting the values of X and Y on any circle, so long as it's centered at the origin and has a um, non-zero radius. All right, so that's unit circle trig. Hopefully that was a review. I mean, this is, uh, you're getting this fire hose version, so you're getting this pretty quick. Um, and so after the unit circle trig, we will actually start looking at this and see, um, consider trig a collection of periodic functions of a continuous variable. But that'll be the next video, and I will see you then.